I'm going to go really pretty much straight into the talk time now. And the, just to let you know, I just for those who've joined, you might not have seen our verse for the year uh, printed out on these cards. We will make sure that we send one of these out to you. So again, sometime in January, we will put one in the post to make sure everyone's got a couple of these um, cards, which is our verse for the year that uh, is up on the screen there. And let's just remind ourselves of what the verse for the year is. It's, and if you, you don't have to, but depending on your circumstances, where you are right now, you can speak it out loudly if you want with me, or if that's not appropriate, you might wanna just um, say it quietly in your own hearts. But let's just say this verse a couple of times together. So, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And let's not forget the reference, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Just say it one more time so it can just start to sink into our minds and hearts and spirits. Be joyful always, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. So that is our new verse for the year that we just hold very lightly to, but often find that it's helpful for us as individuals and also will be helpful for us as a church as well to remind ourselves of this verse. Um, so I'm going to just encourage you. Um, oh, in fact, let's just begin with a prayer. Father God, I just want to thank you for one another. Thank you for church gathering together online this morning. And Father, I want to ask and pray your blessing upon each and every person uh, involved in the service. So Lord, wherever we are, whether we're, whatever emotions we might be going through, whatever uh, worries or concerns we might have for the future, Lord, we choose to place ourselves into your care and under your wing and under your leadership and under your guidance. And Lord God, we ask and pray that for us individually and as a church, whatever 2021 might bring, that we would know the presence, the power and the increased anointing of God in our lives. And Lord, I pray that you will work this verse into our hearts and minds and spirits, Lord God, and that we would live it out to your praise and to your glory in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So let me just encourage you, this first for the year, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, and we'll get one of these cards out to everyone uh, during January. I'd like to give you a challenge that if you are willing to memorize this verse, so that you know it inside out, back to front, and every which way, to memorize this verse, and ask God to fulfill this verse in your life. If you're willing to do that, let's say every day for 2021, let me tell you, by the time December 2021 comes round, you will be full of the presence, the power, the joy of the Lord. When Jesus uh, comes in and uh, touches our lives, he changes us from the inside out. And this is a verse that will change us too from the inside out. If we will really um, adopt it, live it 24 seven, it will change my life. It will change your life. Uh, because here we see something of the general will of God for your life and for mine. Uh, so it is amazing verse. And what I'm going to do is just say briefly, just make a few points of, about this particular verse. And if none of you have a life verse, then any of our verses for the year are great life verses to have, something that we live by, not just for a year, but actually all the time. And let me tell you one or two things this verse does say. I'm going to major on what it does say, but also one or two things it doesn't say. Let me tell you what this verse doesn't say. This verse doesn't say, rejoice sometimes. Pray occasionally. Give thanks if you feel like it. The verse doesn't say that. This verse isn't a, a pick and mix of options. Well, I'll choose one out of three. Yes, I'll maybe be joyful, but praying, not really, giving thanks, not really. It's not a pick and mix. It's not an options. It actually contains commands and imperatives. And it has an intensity uh, in this verse. Um, it has an intensity. It's not just what God wants us to be doing, praying, joyful, thankful, but there's also a, a level of intensity which goes with each of those discipleship characteristics. 
because to what extent should we be doing these things? Well, joyful always. Pray continually. Thanks, all circumstances. So there is a there's a command and there's an intensity about this verse. Um, so it's not the easiest verse in many ways. It's an easy, easy verse to read. It's not the easiest verse to live by, but that is the challenge that God is giving us uh, at the beginning of this year. So let me just make several points. And the first one is this. This verse is God's will for your life and for mine. This verse is God's will for your life. I don't know how often you spend time asking, God, what's what, what's your will? What, what do you want me to do? What's your will for my life? Um, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? What ministries do you have for me? How do you want me to serve you, God? Hopefully we all do that constantly. I certainly do all the time. God, what, what are your purpose? What are your plans for my life? It's a healthy thing to be always asking God for his will for our lives. And, and God wants to share with each one of us his specific will which will be different for you than it is for me uh, he'll all have specific uh, wills for our lives a purpose and a plan for our lives um, as part of his his uh, general will for us but if you haven't yet found God's more specific will for your life or even his general will for your life then I encourage you use this first and spend time um, meditating on it because God doesn't want us as Christians to muddle through in the mediocre lane of following Jesus. There is no mediocre lane for following Jesus. Jesus wants us in the outside lane, in the, in the radical sold out for Jesus lane. That is the track, the path, the way that God has for all. He wants us all to be not mediocre Christians, but sold out. Um, Jesus freaks, if you like, sold out for Jesus, full on for him. And this verse carries that intensity of what it means to really follow Jesus well. It's not just, um, yeah, it's what we do and how we do it, really clear. So this, this verse is God's will for your life. Um, and Paul identifies three general aspects of his will for your life and for mine. And those three things are really clear. They are to be joyful, to be prayerful, and to be thankful. Um, and this, so this verse contains part of God's general will for your life and for mine. Let's just take them one at a time. First one is this. It is God's will for you and for me to be joyful. It's God's will for you to be joyful. Did you know that? You, um, let me tell you, it is. God wants you and me to be full and filled with his joy. The joy that Jesus gives is both a gift of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, and a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Joy is part of the very nature and character of who God is. God is joyful and joy-filled, and he wants the joy that he has and he experiences, Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He wants to impart that to all those who follow him, to you and to me. So it is God's will for you to be joy-filled. It's not just if you've got a joyful, cheerful disposition, you'll be joy-filled. No, God wants every Christian, every follower to be full of joy, full of the joy of the Lord. Now that's a challenge, isn't it? Um, you might think, well, I'll be joyful sometimes, but all the time, always be joyful. Um, how many always joyful Christians have you ever met? Um, probably not as many as we should. And I would encourage us all at the beginning of this new year to ask God to release a flow of the joy of the Lord, of his joy in our lives. Joy despite a pandemic, joy despite anything else that might be kicking off around us. Ask God to release a flow of his joy into your life um, at the beginning of this year. And you know, to be joyful is a command, it's not a suggestion. It's not a suggestion, it's a command. Be joyful. Uh, it's an imperative. As I mentioned the joy is a gift and a fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is part of the character of who God is and what he is, God is like and what he wants you and me to be like too. God wants us to be 
wants the joy of the Lord to strengthen us, to be our strength. It's not just a cheerful, smiley face. Actually, it's something much deeper than that. God wants the, his joy to be so deep within us that actually it is a source of strength to us, a source of strength to us. Um, Nehemiah um, 8 verse 10, it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The more that we can ask God to loose us and release us to experience his joy and choose to, to go uh, to be joy filled, uh, the more that we will know God's strengthening deep in our inner, inner being. Um, the joy of the Lord is a fact, not a feeling. It's not dependent on how we feel. It's a, it's a fact. Um, it's an established truth, the joy of the Lord. Um, the joy of the Lord comes from knowing Jesus. It's a joy that the world doesn't understand. The, the world does not understand the joy, of the, the joy of the Lord. It doesn't understand who God is, let alone the joy of the Lord. But the joy of the Lord is what God wants to impart to us. And being joyful doesn't mean we have to deny our feelings. We have to pretend everything's happy, sweet things under the carpet. That's not what this verse uh, is saying at all. But what it is saying is that there is a source of joy which God wants to be a strength to you, to your life, to every situation, circumstance you go through. And, you know, God is a joy giver. It's, it's who he is. It's his character. It's, it's, it's his nature. It's in the very character of God to be joyful and joy filled. And let's contrast the joy that God gives with the devil, who is a joy stealer. The devil will do everything he can to make us feel joyless. He will do everything he can to steal our joy. Do not let the devil steal the joy of the Lord from your life. Um, and God wants us to know this joy in all situations, in all circumstances, even in the hard times, even in the tough times, even in the tests and trials and challenges, the joy of the Lord is our strength because we know who Jesus is. And you know, the Thessalonian church that Paul is writing to here, um, they were facing some persecution of their own. They're going through testing times, trials. We read about it in 1 Thessalonians 3. They were going through some persecutions, facing persecution for their belief in Jesus. And yet, what does Paul tell them? Yes, hey, you're being persecuted for your faith, but do you know what? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Be joyful always, even in the persecution times. And Jesus said in Matthew 5, 11, you know, when you're persecuted, rejoice, be joyful and be glad, um, for great is your reward in heaven. So the Thessalonians didn't have it easy. Uh, they were going through persecution and tough times themselves. And yet Paul writes them, be joyful always. It's a word to you. It's a word to me. This, the beginning of this year, be joyful. Um, be joyful always. And let me give you an example of someone who was joyful in the most really difficult of times. Her name is Mrs. Prest. You've probably never heard of her, P-R-E-S-T. She's an example of incredible joy in the most difficult circumstances, something like the Thessalonian church were going through, because she was somebody who in around 1555, uh, during, during the time of uh, Queen Mary on the throne and, and life for, for born again Christians was a really, really difficult time. And she was, she was one of the most faith-filled, courageous, unshakable, unwavering people you could ever, could ever have met. She was 54 years of age. She was very short. She was very stoutly built. She'd never been to church. She was unschooled um, and unlearned. And so when, when her tormentors and uh, people were interviewing her, they were taken aback by this unusual woman, both physically and not, not been to Bible college or anything else like that, but she could take them to task on their faith and on their theology. And in fact, some of the inquisitors actually just would get her in and would fire questions at her because they were almost staggered by her answers. And although they mocked her and things, they were just 
impressed by her unshakable faith uh, in God. And the sad thing about Mrs. Press is the people that first reported her to the authorities were actually her own husband and her grown up children because she wasn't going to the right sort of church and doing the right sort of things. And that is where, if you like, her persecution began. And then the authorities took over. And so they mocked her, taunted her. And then when they finally um, read the sentence um, against her, which was that she was going to be condemned to, the, to be burned uh, at the stake, burned by flames of fire, this is what she said. She said, this day have I found that which I have long sought. I will not recant my faith. God forbid that I should lose um, the life eternal for this carnal and short life. I will never turn from my heavenly husband. God is my friend most faithful. And she was led out and she was burnt at the stake because she had this unwavering, unshakable joy um, of the Lord, even when she was being, you know, taking them to be burnt at the stake. What a great example, Mrs. Prest. Uh, it'll be great to meet with her in, in heaven. Uh, what a wonderful person. So Jesus' joy, the joy that Jesus gives, gives strength as it did to, to her, Mrs. Prest. And as I mentioned before, Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is your strength, is my strength, is the strength of every born-again Christian believer, including Mrs. Prest. So that's the first point, the joy, um, be joyful always. The second point is, um, is this. It's God's will for you to pray constantly. It's God's will for you to pray continually. It's his will for you to be joyful. It's his will for you to pray constantly. No pressure. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. It says pray constantly. It doesn't say pray occasionally. It doesn't say pray if you're a prayer warrior. It's God's general will for all who love him and follow him is to be in constant communion with him, to be praying, to be talking to him, to be listening to him, to be waiting upon him, to be hearing from him, as Johnny was mentioning earlier, to be spending time in the presence of God, not just in a prayer meeting, but a, a constant relationship. God says, pray um, continually. Um, and we talk and pray to God about everything about the big things in life, about the small things, everything, everything matters to God. There's nothing that doesn't. And if you remember back to 2018, our verse for the year in 2018 was 2 Chronicles 7 verse 14, which says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and will heal their land. That was our verse of the year. And there, combined with Pray Continually uh, in 2021, um, there's a God's encouragement, exhortation for us to be prayerful, to be praying for the world we're living in. Roger shared that prophetic word, um, which we will put out to you probably later on in, in this month. But um, there's a real necessity for God's people to continue to be found in the place of prayer, praying to God, praying for to God for ourselves and but also praying for this nation praying for Europe pray, praying for the nations of the world God wants to find his people on their knees and he wants you and me to step up our joy-filledness but also our prayerfulness may you and I be a prayerful Christian this year may we be a Christian that is full of prayer um, because that is God's will for your life and my life his general will and it's, there's just such a necessity with all that is taking place, this testing time, this coronavirus pandemic, when so many people are running fearful and not joyful and are running scared. Uh, that is not what God calls us to do. He calls us to be joyful and to be prayerful. So let's be praying um, at this time um, that God would move mightily, God would move powerfully. And let's keep praying for the nations of the world. And again, as I mentioned in the notices, I really cannot encourage you enough. If you are not yet part of a prayer triplet, please form one. For we find two other committed Christians and form a prayer triplet with them. 
the beginning of a new year is a great time to resolve before God to say, yeah, I'm going to take prayer more seriously, more constantly. And actually, I'm going to form that prayer triplet that I've thought about, never quite got round to, get round to it in the next week or two. And, and it's one of the things that God is, is saying to his church, his people, to be joy-filled, to be prayerful. And prayer triplet, which is, say, at least one hour a month, that's all. One hour a month is nothing in terms of being prayerful. But one hour a month even will make a difference. Or one hour every two weeks will make a huge difference. And so in the prayer triplets, we're encouraging them to be male or female prayer triplets, to meet minimum of an hour a month and to be praying for um, those you long to see come to know Jesus, praying for one another, sharing prayer needs in your triplet, but also praying for the world, those three things. And uh, that will hopefully keep us sharper uh, in our own individual prayer as well. So prayer triplets, do think about that. Um, and then final, final um, command actually from 1 Thessalonians 5 is that it is God's will for you to be thankful. It's God's will for you to be thankful. He wants you to be a thankful and a thank-filled person. Give thanks in all circumstances. And, you know, to be thankful is to express our gratitude for who God is and what God has done. And when we remember that Jesus is the God who was persecuted himself, who was beaten up, who was bruised, who was kicked, who was punched, who was spat at, who was mocked, who was stripped, who was beaten, who was nailed to a cross, who is the only God who can forgive our sins, who accepts us, um, and who is wanting to welcome us into his eternal presence in paradise. When we remember what Jesus has gone through for us, we have to be a thankful people and thankful individuals when we remember who God is and what he's done. And that's why we can be joyful, prayerful and thankful in all circumstances, because we have seen, we've read the end of the story. We know the script. We know who God is. We have a relationship with him, a relationship the world does not understand. And therefore, those three things are possible. Joy, prayer and thankfulness. And, um, and in all circumstances, huge challenge. We've all been through circumstances where probably the last thing we wanted to do was to be thankful. But actually, there's a, a secret that God gives us here that if we can learn to be thankful, even when life is tough, Mrs. Prest, um, then we can know that strength and that all sufficient God guiding us and leading us uh, at every step of the way. Let me tell you, um, John Wesley, we all know of John Wesley, a major man of God who God used to bring revival to, to many places, a really anointed man of God, powerful preacher, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, before he was a Christian, uh, um, about 12 years before he was a Christian, um, he was at, uh, at a university college. And at this college, there was a porter. Um, and this porter was a really poor guy. He had very little uh, in life, um, but it was his job just to be a little bit of a caretaker, keep an eye on the door. And John Wesley, one day, he, he, he never forgot a conversation that he had with this porter. He couldn't quite get over how thankful and how joy-filled this porter was, even though he had absolutely nothing. And this is how the conversation went. Wesley said to the porter, quote, you thank God when you have nothing to wear, nothing to eat, and no bed to lie upon. What else do you thank him for? So Wesley was being sarcastic. He was saying, God, you've got nothing. You've only got one coat. You've got nothing. And yet, yet how, how is it you can be like you are? And the porter answered, I thank God that he has given me my life and being and a heart to love Jesus and a desire to serve him. Wow, there's a guy who didn't have much to be thankful for, this porter, had nothing, um, was in poverty, and yet he had a thankful heart that that brief conversation at a door 12 years earlier was something that John Wesley never forgot. He saw in this, this porter a thankfulness that he knew that he lacked in his own life, and we know that Later on, John Wesley was converted and God used him mightily. 
So thankfulness is a great quality. Let me tell you what is not a great quality. A great quality is not thanklessness. To be an unthankful person to a thankless person is not a good quality. Why? Because it shows such ingratitude for a Christian to God for who he is and for what he's done. And um, beware of being unthankful. And do you know, with all of these qualities, they are choices that we have to make as Christians. We can choose to be joyful or we can choose to be joyless. And we can choose to be prayerful or we can choose to be prayerless. We can choose to be thankful or to be thankless. And, you know, it says be thankful in all circumstances. We can all have been in circumstances where maybe we found it very difficult to be thankless. But if we choose to go through the joyless, prayerless, thankless situations, then generally our problems and troubles get bigger. We get full of self-pity. We start shaking our fist at God rather than praising and lifting our hands to God. And, and actually God wants part of his general will for our lives is that we become increasingly joyful, prayerful, and thankful. That is what God wants us to be it is who he is and it's what he calls us to be as well so um beware of thanklessness and you might think well Matthew it's all very easy to just give the you know um you know the theory the reality is not always like that let me give you one last example of somebody who was joyful and thankful when he had every reason not to be let me tell you about a person called Martin Rinkart. Martin Rinkart. So we're going back to about 1637. He was German. He lived in uh, Eilenburg. He was a pastor. And it was during the Thirty Years' War where Eilenburg kept getting invaded. He was, um, <laughs> it was, it was a really, really difficult time. The, 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 that town was a walled town that was sealed off there. There was plague happening. There was pestilence happening. There was famine happening. And in fact, all the other pastors in this town, Eilenburg died. Martin Rinkart was the last one left alive. And in 1637, Martin Rinkart as a pastor would be taking up to 50 funerals a day. And in fact, in that one year, he took 4,000 funerals. He was the only pastor left alive, including the, the, the funeral of his own wife and other members of his family. He was a, a, a singer, a songwriter. He was, um, he was someone who wrote 66 different songs and hymns. And he had every reason not to be thankful, not to be joyful, to almost feel like giving up. But there's one particular hymn that he wrote that will probably, most of us will know. And let me tell you the name of this particular hymn that he wrote at, in that year or a, that year when he had the biggest catastrophes of his life, the most difficult time of oppression and famine and plague. Literally there was plague happening all around. What is the hymn that he wrote? He wrote this hymn. Now, thank we all our God. We'll know that, that song. I'm not going to try and sing it for you, but um, now thank we all our God. When he had every reason not to be thankful, when he had every reason to be thankless and hopeless and joyless, his own wife, he took her funeral, along with 4,000 others in one year. And yet he wrote, and how does the first verse of that hymn go? It goes, now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things has done. He's not focusing on the negative. He has not lost his awareness of who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. Who wondrous things has done in whom this world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. I'd like to think that you and I would be able to write that verse for a hymn if we'd been through everything that Martin Rinkard had been through. But I don't know, I, you know, I wonder. But actually, what a great example of somebody who remains faithful to God 
and committed to God and who is used by God, even with, well, far more than the coronavirus going on all around him, still serving God well, still full of joys, full of love, full of prayer, full of thanks. Um, that is, that is um, really, you know, it, it, he and, and Mrs. Prest as well, if you like, they epitomize um, this verse for us, really. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And I think in those two people, Mrs. Prest and in Martin Rinkart, we see two people living out this verse in the most difficult testing of times. And God asks you and I to do the same. It's his challenge to you and I at the beginning of this year to put this verse into practice in our lives. And you might think, well, Matthew, it's all very good saying that, but, but, but. Okay, let me just one final little thing um, that would be easy to miss in this verse, uh, or in fact, it's three verses for the year, but we'll call it the verse for the year. And it's the short phrase, in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus. If we were to try and do any of these things in our own strength, with our own best efforts, with our own human resolve, we're probably not going to get very far. But it's the in Christ Jesus bit. It was the in Christ Jesus that kept Mrs. Prest going. It was the in Christ Jesus that kept Martin Rinkart going. It's the in Christ Jesus that keeps you and I and every believer and follower of Jesus going. Because it's the in Christ Jesus. It's because we're in him and he is in us that we can know the joy that only Jesus can give. We can be prayerful and we can be thankful. Um, if we do it not in our own strengths, because we're going to fail at the first hurdle, but actually we do it in Christ Jesus. We realize that you and I are those that are in Christ. Um, he's with us. It's not just by our best human efforts. <laughs> well, I've said enough. And I'm just going to just um, before we worship again, I just like to have a time response time now, a time when we can respond to God. And I don't know what God has been saying to you, speaking to you, whispering to you. Maybe you've not heard anything yet from God. But let me tell you, God wants to speak to you and me at the beginning of this new year, to us as individuals, to us as a church. And I'm going to just have a moment now when I'm just going to invite the Holy Spirit to come and to begin to minister to you wherever you are. And... I'm going to pray at the end uh, that God would impart something of the joy of the Lord to each and every one of us. That fits in really well with the prophetic word that Roger shared earlier. But before we get to that point, let's just respond to God and let's just um, invite him to come close. So you might like to just hold out your hands in the act of receiving from God, from the Holy Spirit, from Jesus. And Lord, as we have our hands held out to you and our hearts open to you, I pray a simple prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and breathe upon each and every one of us as we wait in your presence at the beginning of this year. Come, Holy Spirit. Come and move among us. Come and stir us, Lord God. Come and challenge us, Lord God. Come and open us from any straight jackets we might be wearing. Come and unlock any prison doors that might, be, that might be restricting us, Lord God. Any prisons in our minds, in our hearts, in our physical bodies, Lord God, at the beginning of this year, we invite you to come fully into our lives, Lord God. Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill our minds. Come and fill our hearts. Come and fill our spirits. Come and fill our physical bodies. Lord Jesus, come. Come. And Lord, as we think about those three qualities, joy. Lord, if that's something where we need to receive more of from you, then we open our hands to receive a fresh flow of the joy of the Lord as our strength. Maybe if it's prayer, it's the thing we struggle with. Lord, we open our hands and our hearts to you and say, Lord, may 2021 be the year of breakthrough in our prayer lives and our prayer relationship with you, Lord God. Father, unlock us to become the prayer warriors that you're, you've, you're calling us to be. 
prayer filled, engaged in spiritual warfare, praying constantly, Lord God, praying for the world, praying for the nations, praying in a way that you can hear and answer our prayers, Lord God. So, Father, if prayer is the issue we struggle with, bring us a freedom to pray now, Lord God, I ask. Uh, open up our prayer lives in a way like we have never known before, Lord God. And if it's thank, being thankful, which is our issue, we find it difficult to be thankful. We can be joyful and prayerful, but thankful is our issue. We struggle with that. Then, Lord, we open up our hearts and our lives to you, Lord God, and pray, Lord, set us free, deliver us from a spirit of thanklessness and put within us, Lord, a spirit of thankfulness that we would understand who you are. That's why we can constantly be thankful. And I pray, Lord God, that we won't occasionally be thankful, but daily we'll be thankful to you, Lord God. We will go out of our way to look for things where we can be thankful and give you praise and glory. So, Father, I pray for breakthroughs in joy, in prayer, in thankfulness, Lord God, in your mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. And I just ask, Lord God, just to go deep in each, each one of us. And I'm going to just pray now a prayer of imparting and particularly that the joy of the Lord will be your strength for 2021. That's the prophetic word that Roger had is that, yes, 2021 will be something of a roller coaster ride, but God wants us not to be full of fear on that roller coaster, but He wants us to be full of the joy of the Lord on that roller coaster, and that we hold on tight not to the bar in front of us, but we hold on tight to Jesus. And the tighter we hold to Jesus, the more the joy of the Lord will fill us. So, Lord, I just pray an imparting now the joy of the Lord to come and strengthen us, Lord God, where we're feeling weak and feeble and rubbish, Lord God. I pray, Father God, for the joy of the Lord just to come and fill us now to overflowing. I pray in part, speak your word of joy over us, Lord God, that, Father, shackles will be broken off, that, that chains and ropes will, that bind us will be broken off, that we will be able to walk in the freedom of joy, prayer, and thankfulness, Lord God. And I pray now for an imparting upon us individually. I pray an imparting, Lord God, upon us as your church, Christ Church, St. Paul's, the church, Lord God, I pray for a loosing of joy as just an antidote to the fear and worry that so many uh, are suffering from, Lord God. And Father, I just speak out that those words of Jesus from John 15, verse 11, where Jesus says that my joy, Jesus says, may be in you. Oh, Lord, I pray the joy of Jesus in each and every one of us right now, Lord God, and that your joy um <laughs> may be complete in us lord god so father jesus imparted his joy to the disciples jesus would you impart your joy to each one of us now lord god joy despite circumstances and in every circumstance lord god and father i just pray that the joy of the lord would well up um and bubble up within each and every one of us as one of the gifts and fruit of the Holy Spirit that you would grow and develop this year in each one of us, Lord God. So, Father, I just pray for a release from spirits that bind and hold us back, Lord God, or keep us mediocre rather than full on for you, Lord God. And I pray for a loosing and releasing of your joy, spirit of prayer, and a spirit of thankfulness over us as individuals and over us as a church, Lord God Almighty. So, Father, we receive this from you and we pray that in Christ Jesus, you will grow us in these three ways, Father God. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I'd just like to say that if, um, if you would like someone to pray for you at the end of this service, then go to the website, click on the link after service prayer, and we will pay you up with somebody who will pray for you. God bless you. And over to Marco and Helen, who are going to lead us in a couple of songs of worship now. <laughs>